Chairman, thank you. I've been wondering, sitting next to a farmer from the great livestock country of Ireland, whether to admit that I'm a vegetarian. With a wife who runs two allotments and produces most of our food, so I'm only half in this difficult food chain. Uh, I speak on behalf of ARC, the Agricultural and Rural Convention 2020, which has been created as a platform for civil society, uh, the citizens and their organizations, to articulate a vision for a sustainable future CAP. It embraces civil society organizations from many different sectors and interests at European, national, regional and local level, which represent a wide variety of interests, including some farmers, consumers, rural communities, nature conservation, cultural heritage, animal welfare, third world development and others. Our message from civil society focuses on principles, on the goals for a new CAP. It's based on intense discussion uh, in the ARC network and it draws on the public response to the consultation. We will continue the debate through our website and regional meetings into the autumn and we will then offer a communication from civil society to the European institutions. Our approach is based by, on a concern for the well-being of rural people, rural economies and the rural environment throughout Europe. It is driven also by awareness of things which have been mentioned at this great conference. The drastic and continuing loss of biodiversity, the gross disparities of income and quality of life between regions and people within Europe poverty and hunger elsewhere in the world, the need for radical reduction of greenhouse gases in order to avoid catastrophic climate change, rising public concern about energy security, food security, food quality and the link to public health and other imperatives. And we perceive that these pose a major challenge to the peoples and governments of Europe and we believe that a radical review of policies for both agriculture and rural development is needed as a result. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we suggest that this radical review should be focused on two key concepts. First, a paradigm shift in agriculture from a dominant model of intensive industrial farming and a centralized food industry to sustainable farming everywhere and a diversified pattern of regional and local production and processing of food with closer links between farmers and consumers and high care for public health and environment. And second, an economic renaissance of rural areas, building on the strength and diversity of communities and cultures and the sustainable use of human and natural resources. Let me explain these. First, the paradigm shift. As other speakers on the panel have said, uh, the CAP has changed in recent years in the form of support to farmers and it has responded to new social and environmental demands through what is now the second pillar. Now, we perceive the need is to accelerate and crystallize this shift into a new paradigm, a reformed CAP, a CAP for the people, as Paolo Bruni also said, focused on the multipurpose role of agriculture and on the well-being of rural areas. With respect to the, uh, the consumer representative, this is not just about food, it's about rural areas as well. The new paradigm would focus on sustainable farming everywhere, and on a diversified pattern of regional and local production and processing of food with high care for public health and environment. It would connect the food and farming sector more fully to the aspirations of Europeans as expressed so clearly in the recent public debate. It would consolidate, legitimize 
and guide the future CAP and its funding by European taxpayers. It would offer, a phrase that's been used before, a win-win-win between consumers, farmers, the environment and the well-being of rural areas. Now, this paradigm would embrace key issues we've been discussing at this conference. I refer in one-liners to six of them. Farm land should be kept in good heart and in sustainable cultivation throughout Europe for long-term use in food production. Second, Europe should produce high-quality food to the quantity that Europeans need, including all the commodities such as animal feed required for its production. Third, the rising public concern for safe and healthy food would be met should be met by widespread education about food, diet and the link to health, accurate information, not misinformation, and by promotion of fresh regional and local foods and of direct links between consumers and producers. Citizens as consumers would thus be able, if they wish, clearly to indicate the kind of agriculture that they want. <clears throat> Fourth, Fair partnership would be built into the European food chain, including to enable farmers to achieve remunerative farm gate prices. I say to my colleagues on the panel that I haven't seen much evidence of their willingness to form the fair partnership in the food chain that Commissioner Cholos has called for at the beginning of this conference. Added value activity would be encouraged at local and regional level through small and medium-sized enterprises particularly and regional and local food systems would be promoted. Our second proposal complements the first, namely an economic renaissance of rural areas. Many rural regions have been gravely weakened by the collapse of collective farming, the centralization of industry and commerce, outmigration of young people and other forces. We propose that the EU should honour its commitment to social, economic and territorial cohesion by launching an economic renaissance of rural areas. This would aim to strengthen and diversify rural economies according to the potential in each region. And I build on what was reported by Teresa. It could include support for small and family farms, for labour-intensive farming activity, for diversified enterprises on and off the farm, and for new young entrants into farming, and for the building of regional and local partnerships in the food chain. It would strengthen the secondary and tertiary sectors, with particular focus on small and medium-sized enterprises. Development of tourism, Okay. innovative use of information technology, generation of renewable energy, and the location of high-tech industries in high-quality settings. Special attention should be given to economic regeneration in remote, mountainous, and isolated areas, subsistence farming communities, and areas of rural poverty. More broadly across rural Europe, programs of rural development should continue prepared at national or regional level, focused in each area on the needs, the development potential and the skills and involvement of the people, and in our view the main practical effort should be handled by sub-regional partnerships, structured on the basis of the leader experience, but with a wider brief and greater delegated responsibility. I end by repeating our call, an appeal from civil society, for a paradigm shift in European agriculture. We must move into an era of truly sustainable production, processing and trade in food, with a higher concern for food quality, public health, care for the environment and biodiversity, responsible use of all resources, and all this should contribute and be linked to a widely based economic renaissance of rural areas. I appeal through you, Chairman, to Mr. Damati as Director General, to include this new paradigm and the rural renaissance in the scenarios that he is exploring 
as he and his colleagues prepare the Commission's communication. We in ARC stand ready to help in this process from the perspective of civil society. Thank you.